let's go ahead and get moving. What is a civil engineer? Civil engineers design and maintain and build society's infrastructure. So everything you see that isn't green and natural has been touched by a civil engineer. That's a lot of stuff. That's buildings, other closed in spaces, transportation networks, everything from roads and highways to airports um, and trains, rail systems, water supply systems, hazard mitigation, everything that's happening with coastal engineering and floodplains and then environmental protection projects. We've seen a lot of that with um, the COVID-19 situation. So a couple of highlights here for faculty. Uh, Dr. Etherton is one of our structural engineering faculty, and he's doing some focused research on earthquake engineering to build beams that will stand up better during earthquakes. That's kind of cool stuff. He has a lot of work and projects that are out at our structures lab, and we can talk about that in a little bit too. Then Dr. Hisham Raka is one of our transportation engineering faculty, and he is developing uh, some computerized assistance for drivers to navigate through traffic lights. So that will increase fuel efficiency and make things faster. That's just one piece, well, structures and transportation, two pieces of civil engineering. Dr. Amy Pruden and Dr. Peter Vikaslund just recently started identifying how the COVID-19 virus can be tracked through outbreak through uh, water and wastewater. So they're doing sample testing around the campus of Virginia Tech and tracking the data to help us proactively identify where the outbreaks might be in the residence halls so we'll know where to focus our energy as a community. That's pretty cool stuff. A group of students worked a few years ago. Note this photo was taken in 2017, so they're not, the students are not masked because that didn't happen. Um, they worked with a group of mechanical engineering students and used leftovers from the dining hall to create electricity as part of a biogas generator. That was a really neat project. So if you're choosing to study civil engineering at Virginia Tech, what that means is you're going to gain some basic and fundamental knowledge about the way civil engineers operate in everyday life. All of those pieces that are listed there are, are the things that you can study in civil engineering at Virginia Tech. From construction, environmental, geotechnical, land development, materials, structures, transportation, and water resources. Our curriculum is very broad and it's intentionally so. There's a lot of opportunity in this major. Unlike other engineering majors, the civil engineering program here at Virginia Tech gives students an opportunity to kind of create your own way. So for example, if you are interested in structures, but your friend sitting next to you is interested in environmental, the two of you can pick your own path. You don't have to follow exactly the same curriculum. Um, what you do is you choose six of the eight fundamental courses that we offer in the department. And you take those six classes and you decide which of those six are your most favorite. Probably about 80% of first year students come in with an interest in structural engineering. And by the time they've experienced all six of the classes that they take for the course requirements, they've discovered another personal interest in transportation or construction or materials even. Um, so once you have taken those six classes, then you determine the thing that you really like and you choose your advanced courses in the discipline that you're the most interested in. So this is a little bit unusual for an engineering program, but what it allows you to do is to build it the way you want. Um, and that's pretty neat. You can also use undergraduate research as part of your degree. 
The degree requires 129 credit hours. A typical semester is somewhere between 15 and 17 hours. And a common question that happens at these events is what is the class size? And it really varies in civil engineering. Your sophomore level classes might be really big, at least one of them, because we only teach it in the fall semester, up to 200. But as you move through the curriculum, the classes get smaller. So if you're taking water and wastewater design, you might only have 20 students in your class. So it kind of just depends. Um, but in general, the overall idea is that your classes are larger in your freshman, sophomore year, and then they dwindle down in size as you progress in the curriculum. What our curriculum does is it provides depth, the opportunity for students to have depth and breadth in their curriculum. So by taking six out of the eight fundamentals, you're getting some breadth because you're learning about geotech and environmental and construction and six different disciplines. And then by choosing your advanced courses, you're getting some depth as well. So I have some photos that will show you um, what students kind of are doing. So I don't need to um, explain. You can read what's on the screen, but this, these are recent. As you can see this year, uh, students were still active in going and participating and seeing the construction sites that are out on campus. There's always a lot of stuff happening at Virginia Tech, and we try to take advantage of that by connecting with the project managers and taking our students to see what's happening on those sites. And in fact, a lot of those project managers are our alumni, so that makes it even nicer that we get to connect with them in that way. Uh, one faculty member does a lot of work with oil spill cleanup and efforts like that, so students get to go out and work with the faculty to clean up oil spills on boats. Out in the construction field, these students in the bottom picture are working on reading plans. And this student is doing a soil compaction test right outside Patton Hall. This was just this spring, actually, I think. I might have even taken that picture. And Kevin Young, who is the faculty member in the blue, in the jeans, in the back, on the top photo, is our faculty member who teaches our surveying class. We call it measurements, CEE measurements here. And students have to use the total survey stations and go out to the duck pond and make a topographical map of the duck pond. There are survey markers, um, but this is an active class that uses this equipment and goes in small groups of three or four um, every semester. The transportation area, unique to Virginia Tech, we have something here called the Smart Road, and that's the photo at the top. It's a two-mile stretch of road that was a collaboration between uh, VDOT, motor companies, and one other place that I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry. But this two-mile stretch of road has the ability to create weather so they can test vehicles. A lot of our students have part-time jobs out at the transportation um, facility that operates the smart road. There's a lot of research that happens. It is a research heavy road. In fact, before I even started working in civil engineering years ago, I did a test on that road of lane change notification systems. And um, now they're in vehicles. So that's kind of cool to see the work that they do there. And then on the bottom, uh, that's Dr. Trani with his arm reaching out. He is one of our faculty who's uh, world-renowned in airport planning and airport systems. So he's evaluating traffic control systems. We have a lot of laboratory facilities on campus, and they are in many different buildings. Not everything is in Patton Hall. The top photo is a picture of our 25,000 square foot research facility. Of course, you can't see all of it in this photo, but this is our structural engineering and materials uh, lab that is off campus. You can walk there if you want. It's not that far off campus, but it's on Plantation Road. 
where a lot of other research facilities are. And then the bottom picture is our hydro lab, which is in the basement of uh, Patton Hall, which is our main civil engineering building. And that is where uh, our current students take fluid mechanics and water resources engineering. And this is a big flume and students do a lot of testing in the lab in the basement of Patton. In addition to the academics, we have student competition teams, the ASCE Steel Bridge and Concrete Canoe teams. Uh, there's some photos here that show you the photo on the bottom left is Jessica Veeman. She won uh, a national award for ASCE and she was the chair of the Concrete Canoe team. And then you can see the welder on the bottom right who does all of the work for the steel bridge. And in the top right, the steel bridge team has a bay at the wear lab. And the wear lab is a facility just a few buildings over from Patton Hall that is designed to give student teams a space to work. Mechanical engineering has their um, hybrid vehicle in there and the underwater sub is there and uh, the design build fly team from aerospace is there. So most of the engineering disciplines have a bay in the wear lab with their competition team. And those teams are always looking for students to participate. So if that's something that interests you and you choose to come to Virginia Tech, get involved right away. They would love to have you. All right, the facts about our program. Our first degree was awarded in 1888. Civil engineering had one of the first female students. She was the class of 1925, which is kind of awesome. We are consistently in the top 10 in U.S. News and World Report. Our graduate program this year was ranked number nine. Um, so keep that in mind if you choose to come to Virginia Tech. We are a top 10 ABET accredited engineering program. And this institution graduates almost half of the civil engineering students in the Commonwealth. Our faculty in the department, we are a big department. We have 57 faculty members, 50 of whom are tenure and tenure track, two research faculty specifically dedicated to research, and five non-tenure track instructional faculty. We have 25% women. And in general, the research contracts that our faculty are working on exceed $40 million. That's a big deal. That means there's more opportunity for you, the student, to do undergraduate research with these faculty who are um, working on these projects. Our faculty have been very well respected for many years. They've earned a lot of accolades in teaching and research um, and in outreach, too. We have a big international component, and our, some of our faculty have recently been recognized uh, for that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So one question you might have is, what can I do besides study? And at Virginia Tech, there's a lot to do besides study. But our students are very active in a lot of ways. The cheerleader that's circled there is a civil engineering student. He did graduate. So this is a little, a year old, I think, the photo. Um, but it was fun to see a civil student always at the basketball games. Um, or on the football field in preparation for game day. Then the middle picture at the top is a concrete, I think it's a concrete canoe, um, concrete for kids day. They do some outreach and they go out to local elementary schools and teach kids how concrete works. Then the picture on the top uh, right is a photo pre-COVID, obviously, because no one's masked, of our field trip to the West Virginia Bridge. Everybody has to be harnessed in because it's very, very tall and you're going over a very scary gorge. I um, have not been on that because that terrifies me. And then the bottom left is a photo of um, a bridge build in, uh, I think that one's Ecuador. Some students went on a, on a trip to build a footpath there and worked on that bridge. And then when the stadium was being constructed, that picture was our students at the stadium. So students are doing all kinds of things and not just in civil engineering. There's 
intramural sports to get engaged with. There's religious organizations. One year we had a really late winter and the ski team trucked in snow to make jumps on the drill field. And uh, the ski team had a little party on the drill field with their snow they hauled in. So there's all kinds of ways to engage on this campus if you're interested. It's just finding the right spot. So for scholarship in civil engineering, um, if you are coming as a freshman, there is a Davenport scholarship that's available through the college. The application deadline for that, I think, is in uh, December or January. So that may have passed. But if you're a junior and you're watching this right now, check into the freshman Davenport scholarship because you'll want to pay attention to when that deadline is. Then um, in the college, departmental awards happen in each major every year. The application goes live in early January and it closes in March and the college makes general awards and then the departments make awards. And we are really, really lucky in civil engineering because we have a lot of really generous alumni of whom I hope one day you will be one. Uh, this year we awarded almost $240,000 to undergraduate students in scholarship. So that's pretty awesome. We also are dedicated to helping our students study abroad if they are interested in that. Of course, that hasn't happened very well because of COVID in the last year. All programs were canceled. Um, but these are some pre-COVID photos of recent trips. We've sent students to um, Botswana, to Germany, to... Ireland, to Australia, to Spain. I mean, just there's lots of ways to study abroad. We do also have an individual in our department whose primary job is to focus and build programs for our students to study abroad so that you can take civil engineering classes while you're abroad. So there's lots of ways to do this. And if this is something that's interesting to you, I would encourage you to reach out and investigate because our curriculum has that flexibility in it and allows you to take the choices you want and build your own path. It also means it's very flexible <clears throat> for allowing you the opportunity to create a study abroad in a semester or during the summer. And in terms of career opportunities for you, um, in this department, we have our own career fair every semester. Uh, fall and spring for just civil engineers to meet and greet with employers that are interested in hiring you. Usually we have about 100 employers at each event, uh, so there's a big opportunity to engage with folks there. In the fall, the College of Engineering also does a big event called Engineering Expo. The Student Engineers Council puts that on. And that is for all 14 disciplines in the College of Engineering, that career fair, which takes up the basically every space on the entire campus um, is full of recruiters looking for engineering students. So the forecast for employment for civil engineers is not expected to decline, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. So there will always be job opportunities for civil engineers. Um, and just for your information, uh, over half of our students, three quarters of our students, have an internship or a work experience while they're in school. This is a key component of our program is our goal is to help you find a job and we want you to get an internship or a co-op if you're interested in that. And we want you to be able to have an opportunity that's going to propel um, your professional career. So this is our infamous Hokie Bird. Uh, hanging out on the steel bridge that was one year's design. I can't remember. And I should have put a pre-COVID photo there for the Hokie Bird because he is not masked either. So with that, I will um, address any questions that any of you have. And I have about four minutes. And then Teresa is going to take over for me and answer questions. Looks like we have um, a question, uh, Ms. Latimer. So the first one, are you able to pursue a structural engineering career with a civil engineering degree? 
Yes. In structures, um, all I should have said that everybody in civil engineering at the undergraduate level graduates with a bachelor's of science in civil engineering, <clears throat> regardless of what undergraduate courses you chose. The idea being that if you are interested in a specific discipline, you would go on and pursue a master's degree. And yes, we do have a five-year master's program, um, which we can talk about a little more. Teresa can kind of help you walk through that. Um, but yes, if you're interested in structures, you would take structural engineering courses in your specialty area, which would be concrete steel materials courses. And then you would consider a master's degree. Absolutely. So the next question is how competitive is the application process? That is a that is a question for admissions. All of the admissions happen centrally at Virginia Tech. My understanding is that we are a fairly competitive institution, but that would be a question for admissions. Next question is uh, how much of civil engineering relates to environmental? Oh, that's a really good question. What is uh, you, some of you may be considering why we have civil and environmental engineering in our name when our undergraduate degree is a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. We don't offer an undergraduate degree in environmental engineering. Um, and the reason we don't is because environmental engineering is one of the choices that students can take in those six of eight categories. So we do offer master's degrees and PhDs in environmental engineering. So if your interest is environmental, this is certainly an avenue that you would want to think about pursuing. Um, a big portion of civil engineering is environmental, but you just have to decide if that's the zone you want to go. Obviously, a student who's interested in structures may not be interested in an environmental but in the big picture of the profession, everybody's going to end up having to work together because if there's a natural disaster, the structure's falling down, but the environmental folks need to come in and make sure it's not impacting anything negatively, right? Next question is, does civil engineering relate to urban planning? Absolutely. One of our new and upcoming focus areas is uh, green technology and sustainability. And if you're talking about things like um, rooftop gardens or designing efficient buildings and that kind of thing, then absolutely, yes. Urban planning, we also have a focus area in land development, which is exactly urban planning. Um, and so our land development folks will be able to teach you from a commercial or residential development way how to build sustainably and how to create space. Next question is how difficult are is an overall major? <laughs> I mean, all of engineering is difficult. Engineering is not easy at all. No, no engineering program is easy. But what I will say is that if you can get past the hurdle of the sophomore year where you're doing um, physics, math, science, physics, math, science, all of those things, um, then you will be okay. It's usually once students get past the sophomore year, they're all in. And the stuff you wanted to study when you came as a freshman is finally available to you. And so it's, it's exciting for you. So I know that Ms. Latimer talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, I've had a lot of students do study abroad. And sometimes, you know, if you can't commit a whole semester, there's a lot of service opportunities. Um, Virginia Tech is very large into um, UPROSEM, which is that I may serve. And so a lot of that, is, there's like a lot of service trips that students do and participate in service projects. Um, there was one that they went to a um, village in Rwanda and built a, a biofilter, biosand filter to filter out water that they would bring in so the village would have clean drinking water. Um, so the students took this on as a project and they spent the whole semester kind of designing it and 
um, you know, using all of their knowledge from their courses to be able to design and gather materials to be able to build this um, uh, biofilter. So it was pretty amazing. I had one of my students who graduated last year who, who did this and participated in it and it was a really great experience. She told me all about it and she won a scholarship to be able to do to go on this trip. So pretty neat things. So okay, how would studying abroad work? So to do that, it probably requires some planning. So if it's something that you know that you want to do, my suggestion would be to reach out to your advisor to start that um, process to think about what you would like to do as far as studying abroad. We'd probably get you in contact with um, Miss, uh, well, Dr. Cranwell now, and she kind of leads the international programs within civil engineering. So you can talk to her and she can tell you about the different opportunities that are available. Um, so to go abroad, you would just need to kind of determine whether you're going to do an exchange program, whether you're going to do, um, and, and within that, there's two different kinds where they're, where we have an agreement already with the university or you're going to go elsewhere, um, or we actually have a campus there. So as part of the university, we have um, the Steger Center, which is in um, Lugano, Switzerland. And so you would go there and then you would take classes with Virginia Tech professors, but then you get time to kind of explore the area. So that's a direct Virginia Tech, you know, Virginia Tech campus in Switzerland um, versus an exchange program where I had a student who went to the university, went to Oviedo, Spain, and I think University of Oviedo. And so she took classes there. So she took like fluid mechanics. And so we were able to determine what classes that she wanted to take um, during that semester. And then we we evaluated it, you know, the department evaluates it to make sure that it can come in. And so um, we were able to plan it that way. And so she spent a semester in Oviedo and then came back and was able to jump right back into the classes that she needed to take um, the next semester. So if you plan it, it's super seamless and you, it just requires planning. And, but there's a lot of uh, faculty and staff that are here to help. Um, we also do have like a survey, a, a class, it's a bridges class within civil engineering. So what they do is they study all about bridges. And then at the end of the spring semester, they go on a two week trip to Europe and they explore the bridges within Europe that they've talked about in class. So there's a couple of a lot of different ways that study abroad works. So you have a couple of options. So it just depends on what you might be interested in, but there's going to be lots of information sessions about it. If it's something you're interested in, we can definitely get you in contact with Dr. Cranwell and she can kind of go over all the options and what you may be interested in. So I hope that answers your question. That's a great question. I, I really wish I had done study abroad when I was an undergraduate. Quick show of hands. I'm used to a lot more interactive environments. So um, how many of you guys have heard of the um, the bar, well, it wasn't a barge, but the huge ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal? And you can just raise your hand if you heard about it. Awesome. A lot of you. So did you know that was related to civil engineering? Um, it's super cool. So how it related to civil engineering is that it, um, it needed a civil engineer, actually specifically a geotech engineer, to be able to help figure out how we could move and dredge out the sand to get out so that the um, barge could get out of the being stuck kind of sideways in the canal. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing with that. So um, just a little, little civil engineering in the news. How hard is it to be accepted into Virginia Tech as an engineering major? It is competitive. I will um, say that it is very competitive because engineering is pretty much um, a very, we're one of the top engineering schools in the country. So um, we definitely get a lot of candidates, um, applicants to the, um, to the university for engineering. So I would say that it, it is, I don't know the specific statistics on that. Um, you can, go to the admissions website and they probably have a little bit more of a breakdown, um, but kind of related to that, the admissions, you know, admissions kind of looks at a student holistically. So they look at a student in, in its, their application in its entirety. So it's not just GPA, it's not just SAT, ACT scores, but rather looking at the student like extracurricul extracurriculars, uh, maybe the high school that you went to, the strength of your curriculum, um, 
a lot of different things. Like, did you work, you know, while you were in call in, in high school or, um, you know, did you win any prestigious awards? Did you do all that kind of stuff? Were you, did you do sports Were you varsity letterman? So they would really look at students as a whole and holistically. So students are kind of evaluated on that. So, um, it is competitive, but if there's like one thing that may not be as strong as another thing, they really take into account you as a whole person. So hopefully that answers your question. But if you want more information, you're welcome to reach out to um, the admissions department here at Virginia Tech, and they're happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, next question is, when do you apply for the accelerated um, master's program? Okay, that is usually done at the end of your junior year. Because at that time, you will have an established in-major GPA and an established um, cumulative GPA in which that the, your application can be evaluated. So how it works is that students, um, or juniors are usually invited to come to an information session and we usually, to be admitted into the accelerated program, there is, there's kind of two parts. There is what we call the dual program, which allows students to take classes while as an undergraduate, graduate classes while as an undergraduate that'll move into their um, graduate program. Um, so to qualify for that, you can only do that in the last semester before you graduate. So let's say you're going to graduate in spring, then you would do, you apply for that, like you're in the fall of your senior year to be able to do the dual program in the spring. Then there's the that's kind of one part of the accelerated program. The other part is what we call the UGG, which is the undergraduate graduate program. And in there you would apply the, the, the spring semester of your junior year. So if you're gonna graduate spring, let's say you were gonna graduate in spring of 2022, you would be graduating at the end, you would be applying right now um, for that program to start in the fall of 20 of this, the next academic year of 21, 22. Um, and what that program allows is for you to double count courses as well as take additional coursework as an undergraduate that would apply towards your master's degree. So what that means is that you, in the dual program, you can't double count any courses, but in the UGG, you would be allowed to double count up to six credit hours between your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. So that's advantageous because that's, you know, kind of two for one on that. Um, and then you can maximize out the number of classes that you could take as, um, you know, towards graduate school. You take up to 12 credit hours into, you know, the master's program, which would allow you to be a true fifth year and not and, and kind of figure it out that way. So what the advantage of doing that was that you would be paying undergraduate tuition for graduate level courses which there is a significant difference between, you know, graduate tuition versus undergraduate tuition. Um, with the bachelor's, master's, like kind of fifth year program, that's very typical for if you're interested in structural engineering. Um, to be a true structural engineer, you have to have a master's degree. Um, and so a lot of the students who are interested in being a structural engineer will go ahead and stay, do the fifth year. Um, to, so that they can go in, be an EIT, and then go get their PE afterwards um, to be a, a fully full structural engineer. Um, so in that case, it's 30 credit hours, um, usually coursework only. So there's no thesis, um, no project or report. Um, so it's just coursework. And so you would have almost half of the 30 credits. So 12, you know, you'd, you'd have almost half of it done before you went into your senior, the, that final fifth year um, towards the uh, master's program. And then you would just graduate a year, the next year. <clears throat> so I know that was probably a really long answer, but it kind of <laughs> necessitated that a little bit. So thanks, that was a really good question. Also, there's a lot of opportunity for undergraduate research. I don't know, I, I'm not sure if Ms. Latimer, I don't think Ms. Latimer got to touch on that, but there are opportunities for undergraduates to do research um, as an undergraduate, that way you can kind of get your feet wet. It's a good way to kind of, if you're interested in doing research or possibly grad school, it's kind of a unique way to be able to get um, experience in that, to try, kind of try it out. 
Um, so there's a lot of undergraduate um, research opportunities that are available to students. You know, typically you don't think about it as much in engineering, but there there is quite a few of those. So in addition to like the design teams, which are super awesome, um, there is undergraduate opportunities for research. Um, some of them are paid, which is super cool. Um, and then some you can just do for credit. Um, you can do either or you can't get credit and get paid, but you can definitely, those opportunities are out there. Um, I've had several students work out at the Structures Lab, which she showed a picture of. Um, so they do a lot of that. And it's actually allowed some students to be able to move into a graduate program because they figured out that they really enjoyed doing that research and ended up doing that. So um, it's pretty neat and a great way to kind of like make some money too if you get a paid, paid one. So those, those opportunities are available as well. Um, to our undergraduates in the civil engineering department. Yeah.